is going on, people? We are back here at the tabletop before you, per usual, as always. We have a tendency to do so from time to time, I suppose, but there's nothing on the tabletop. What are we talking about? What are we reviewing? What are we discussing? What are we getting an initial impression on? And honestly, at this point, I'm realizing that I'm clearly going to title the video of what it's about, and you guys are gonna, this is all just for not an exercise in futility, I suppose. So, either way, we're here, and you know what we're talking about. We're talking about it. That's EDC, not Electric Daisy Carnival with a bunch of hippies and Antifa members or whatever's going on over there. Um, everyday carry. And there's nothing on the table here before you right now because I am currently carrying it. Today, yesterday, tomorrow, every single day, that's what's important most about your EDC. So where do we start? Well, probably with the most common stuff that everybody has, no matter who you are or what you believe in or the type of things you're into or the way that you think about, you know, your EDC, your everyday carry, uh, we all got it, okay? You know, talk about it all the time. The phone. I'm currently using it to record mediocre YouTube content at best, but you could just have it in your pocket to talk to the friends that you actually have. Um, but yeah, your phone. Keys, okay, keys. Everybody's got keys, right? Truck keys, okay, on the truck keys, I drive a god dang Chevy Colorado. It's got more horsepower and torque than a gall dang tornado, I'll tell you what. But uh, flashlight, even just on my car keys, and this isn't even my house keys or anything else, these are just car keys. I can get into my truck, I got spare key for that. Um, the Toronox Classic SD, this thing is old and rickety and falling apart because I've actually used it for years and years um, because it's a good solid piece of kit. But tweezers, toothpicks, little um, knife blade, uh, you know, little flathead screwdriver, scissors, all that good stuff, and, uh, and a light. So on all that, yes, it's an Olight. These are the only lights I will trust from Olight because if they do, not even really if, when they explode, at least it's a little tiny guy and I, I probably won't catch that much shrapnel. So keys, just in the keys alone, okay, something super duper useful. That's a lot of capability. There's a lot of things you can actually do with just these tiny little tools that will benefit you greatly if and when you need something like that. And if I run out the door in my skibbies and I'm getting in the truck, I'm going to have my truck keys and I've got something with me, something useful with me. And that's what it's all about is, is carrying the tools and the stuff that you need on a daily basis or maybe even stuff that you hopefully don't need, uh, but you have have it anyway because there might come a day there might come a time and you better have this stuff that you need um that's why everybody's so worried about the scam that is insurance and, and this that and the third everybody's got a fire extinguisher in the house or at least they should same thing you got to have the tools another common tool they say it's even mightier than the sword uh pen you could have a nice pen. I have a few nice pens, some Tough Rider stuff, a Hinder Investigator, which I actually carry in the EDC bag. This video is probably going to be too long. I'm probably going to do a, a separate video on that. I don't know. We'll see uh, how it goes, how much I'm ranting. I already am. So probably going to go forever. And I don't know why I'm giving you macro and micros of a freaking zebra Z-grip. <laughs> it's just a pen. Working in a gun shop, filling out 4473s all day and stuff. I need a pen. Um, it's nice to have a nice pen, especially like a tactical pen or whatever. Again, tough writer, hinder investigator, you know, microtech does them, different stuff. Um, even surefire because it can be used for different things, but if I got to shove this in your eyeball, I'm going to shove it in your eyeball, you know, if that's all I got. But mainly, this is just a utility thing at work, doing the old job, and I got to have that. But most people have a pen in their pocket, in their purse, whatever, maybe in the vehicle. That's another good option. Make sure you have writing utensils and writing paper or something to scribble on. Um, you know, in the vehicle, not a bad thing. But phone, wallet, uh, we got the wallet, we got the phone. The pen, the keys, here's a wallet, special operations equipment. Everybody's got a wallet or a purse or something. You got to carry the stuff that you need, um, you know, with you to pay for stuff, your your IDs. Let me see the papers, yeah, let me see them. Gift cards to Texas Roadhouse. Roadhouse. Then I got a couple guitar picks and a key bar, whatchamacallit, or thingamajiggy. And uh, my life savings of 40 bucks. This is seven years on YouTube. This is all the AdSense money um, I've ever made. <laughs> 
guitar picks. It's fun. I play, you know, I'm not the best at it, but I play, I used to play and, uh, you know, recently picked it back up and it's fun, but you got to have it. Well, you know, I guess you don't technically have to have a pick, but I keep a pick or two around just in case. And, uh, the key bar key bar, I th I'm pretty sure it's the, whatchamacallit, but, um, you've got some measuring units here. We've got a cap lifter, can opener kind of deal, a little bit of a file going on there. Um, it is made out of titanium, and then I believe laser anode or something. Uh, that's how they get the different anodization colors coming out. A uh, little fat flathead scraper tool. Just a cool little lightweight, thin, um, awesome, useful, handy little thing, even if you're just using it for lifting caps on a beer after a hard day's work. Um, I could have installed it onto my key bar, which again, huge shout out to key bar for sending this out. This thing is absolutely awesome. And I'm actually really, really digging this a lot more than I thought I would have, um, as opposed to traditional style keys on a key ring. Uh, this actually does save a lot of space and it's been rather utilitarian for me. Um, again, this is meant to be able to go into the key bar and have that key bar not only maintain contain and and, and conserve space in your pocket uh, from just your regular house keys whatever uh, it is also a multi-tool uh, I've already got a little bit of a shout out to Dale shout out to the Dale Hayes uh, for the flathead this is super useful I use it all the time on guns on you know gear whatever you got it in your pocket it's right there and you can set up this uh, the system to accept, you know, different styles of tools that they make um, for for different. They even got blades. They've got all types of cool stuff. Now I probably wouldn't have a loose blade uh, just hanging out the key bar. That'd be more of a dedicated thing. Um, but I'm really, really liking the key bar. This is the first uh, time I've ever actually carried one and set one up. I have a little small collection of them uh, just because I think they're cool and uh, you know it's unique and stuff. But I've honestly never set one up. I've been too lazy. And uh, once I got the hang of it and put it all together i'm actually really really digging the performance of something that's it's in the grand scheme of things you would think you know we're gear guys knives and then folding knives and multi-tools and all that stuff like this is that this is all of that and even more and completely customizable and that's pretty sick this video already has nothing fancy length of video vibes, so uh, we might as well go on with it. Each individual utility, uh, again, with the keys, okay, this, this set of keys is a kit, a piece of kit, multiple kit in and of itself, and uh, so is this. I've got, obviously, access to the things that I need access to. Um, and as well as a flathead driver and then this also from key bar uh magnet i believe it's titanium or maybe even aluminum but it's lightweight and uh you know connect yet again another little light so i've got two lights right here that i are bright enough believe it or not to be used as primary lights but i obviously carry more than that and these are great little backups and again yes this is an olight and uh, i will only ever use their keychain stuff because honestly their keychain lights are, are pretty decent that one's micro usb rechargeable this one's one triple a but i love the custom little copper you know over time no two will look alike they'll all fade and and age and wear and patina individually which is cool and and getting into it you know being an edc nerd and edc junkie you know that's the kind of stuff that you come across you can set it up uniquely uh the way that you want have the tools that make you happy and that will work best for you so what's next well, since I'm a fiend and addicted to nicotine, I suppose, um, little vape, little Caliburn or Cali burn, dude, ha ha. I don't know. Um, but you can see this, uh, this is old world technology. This is like, okay, boomer, we get it, dude. You vape or whatever. Like this is, this has been through the ringer and I like to buy the high vis color ones because when I drop them in the grass or in the couch or whatever, I'll be able to find them more easily. I'm always losing my vape. Um, what else we got? Chapstick, the absolute most ubiquitous thing. So many uses, medical, fire starting, crusty, musty looking lips. You know, you don't want that. Um, unfortunately for you guys here on this channel, you know, that's you guys are always listening to me talk and talking a lot. You know, it dries you out a little bit. Sometimes you got chapped lips. You know, I'm just flapping my gums. So I got to have the chapstick on deck. Now, I always rip them open weird and then I have to rip the rest of the thing off, but I'm just running the standard mil spec standard issue uh non-flavored chapstick because I don't care.
So this is probably about where most people's EDC stops, mo most normies, regular people uh, that aren't really gun people or knife people or whatever. And even still at this, I've got several different tools to my at my disposal with the flatheads and the, the whatchamacallit. Quite, I love that that's named that because I probably couldn't remember the name regardless. Um, you know, cutting abilities, you know, lighting abilities. This is probably even more so just between the phone, the wallet, the keys, the extra tools, you know, whatever, you know, most most people maybe don't even have a pen in their pocket, and you should because this is an important tool. Even if you have to write on yourself, you might need to jot something down real quick. People don't even think about it, but this is probably where most people stop. What else we got? Well, if you're a grown man, you should be carrying a pocket knife. Uh, one of the most useful tools I've ever known to exist. This one, huge shout out to Emerson for sending it out. It is it is the Emerson Sheepdog. A uh, little collaboration with Ernie Emerson and um, Lieutenant Colonel David Grossman, I believe, of Sheepdog Knife and Gun. And uh, awesome, awesome, beautiful little fighting folder. Uh, it's a flipper. It's really fun to play with. It's very well made. It's hard use. Uh, and just an excellent knife. One of my favorite knife manufacturers is Emerson because it's something plain, it's something simple, it's purpose-driven, purpose-built, and it gives you everything you need and nothing you don't. Also, it's user serviceable and he actually encourages you to do so. You can mess with the pivot, you can mess with the lockup, you can mess with, you know, cleaning it and all that stuff. So this is a very utilitarian driven tool and uh, not a bad fighting option, okay? We carry tools every day. Uh, that will help us uh, achieve something or, or get a, a job done, accomplish a task, but something like this or, you know, even anything, you are the weapon, this is merely the tool, uh, not bad, not bad, and especially in some places where you can't necessarily carry a pistol, maybe it's still cool to have a pocket knife. This is just as deadly, and it doesn't run out of bullets. That being said, free men don't ask permission, and, uh, you know, live as constitutionally as you feel comfortable. Carry the gun anyway, because you're a good guy, right? Uh, somebody's got to do it. But anyway, pocket knife. And even though I have these two lights right here, I also have a Streamlight Micro Stream. These things are great. You can see it's carried literally every day. I've bent out the clip on it. You know, it's all Boba Fett worn and all that stuff, which is super cool. But really, really handy little unit. Giggity. Um, micro USB rechargeable. It's got, you know, a couple modes on and then like turbo. Um, bright enough, definitely more than bright enough for an admin style light. You drop your keys on the ground under the car or you're pulling up to the house and you're walking in or dark alleyway. It's still bright enough to do that. Um, but that's not even my primary light. The primary light that I've been carrying ever since I've tested it uh, has been the Through Night, the Through Night T2. This thing is actually super impressive. Uh, it runs off of a large larger proprietary cell, but it's been nothing but durable, nothing but reliable. It's proven itself to me. It's also rechargeable, which is uh, very, very convenient. You know, you can plug it in, you know, same chargers you're using for the vape or for your phone or for your computer or for whatever. Um, you can plug it in and just refuel it and it's cutting the cost down on batteries and stuff like that cr123s different stuff can get expensive even hard to find uh this is not a bad option that being said uh all of these lights except for this one which takes a single triple a are rechargeable i'm liking the rechargeable lights it is a convenience thing but i still would rather trust a stream light or a surefire that took you know a couple triple a's couple double a's cr123 a's something like that uh, they're, they're less prone to fail than these styles of lights are, and once these things break, once you can't recharge them anymore, they're done. If your batteries die, put new batteries in it, the light still works. And the same can be said to an extent for some of these, but a lot of these are not replaceable batteries, and therefore you don't have that option. So, but light gets dark literally every single night. 50% uh, of our lives is in the dark and sometimes you got to see stuff for your own safety for other safety for whatever um not a bad idea you know night vision is expensive you can have just a good solid white light and uh it will turn night into bright you could do night light night bright whatever you're doing um but awesome lights gotta have it gotta have it and especially if we're talking about defense you know can't shoot what you can't see speaking of shooting Got some sweat on there, some grime, some wiener sweat on that thing. Nice. Um, 
Glock 43. Glock 43 has been my carry gun for, or at least my most consistent carry gun for a while now. I was originally carrying it in its stock configuration uh, with the Terran Tactical Plus 2 on there. That's the, the mag that I keep in the gun. Um, you know, while carrying, I get a better grip. I get a couple extra rounds out of the holster, and, and that's nice. Plus, it adds weight to the mag, so when you're dropping the mag for a reload, uh, you know, it falls out better, falls out more smoothly, quicker, whatever. Um, stock internals, I am running Ameriglow. Um, I think these are protect. I don't know, just U-notch maybe, but blacked out rear, high-vis, orange front. I prefer, I prefer the yellow front. Um, when I can get it because I think it's brighter. Uh, that's what I run on my 26 and, and I got them on my 20 now and all that stuff. Um, I prefer, but either way, you know, high vis something blacked out rear or maybe like an I dot system. I think those are the most natural and easiest to line up. A lot of people don't like the U notch, but you find it quick and it lines up just as precisely. Uh, you just got to know what you're doing. Um, love this gun. It's thin, it's flat, it's lightweight, it's easy and convenient to carry, but especially in this configuration, it still shoots like a full-size gun. We already mentioned the, the extended mags and stuff like that. Um, full-size grip, a little bit more weight to the gun, easier to balance, more room for me to work, but on top of that, uh, Faxon, huge shout out to Faxon, and all this stuff has got previous videos on it, or there will be much more content on it in the future, and or both. Also, you can always check the link tree that's got a link to all the affiliates and all the different stuff, all the stuff I'm showing you guys. I'll also post relevant comments um, in the comment section below, you know, to the sites or whatever. But Faxon sent me out this signature series match grade barrel. Uh, it's also traditionally rifled, so I can shoot exposed lead projectiles through this and it not going... it. It not going to be an issue. <laughs> it, it won't be a problem. Um, they also have the Exos Comp that they sent out here, and I've got one of these. I got one of these barrels on a full size Glock and a Comp matching, and then uh, here on the 43. And typically, you know, I'm, I thought this was weird. I thought the whole Comp on the carry gun thing. Oh, that's pretentious. You don't need that. You're just doing it for the gram. Uh, you're making the, your small gun bigger. You know, whatever. Is it reliable? Do you have to shoot only, you know, plus P plus through it for the gun? work and uh, I'm telling you folks honestly I'm thoroughly impressed and have potentially even been converted I've been carrying it to test it out shooting it to see how I liked it how it's been working this thing literally shoots anything with this barrel and comp on there I've never had a malfunction I've shot light loaded reloads through it I've shot plus P plus kind of stuff and everywhere in between several different brands uh, and grain weights and it ate it all the gun never short chucked the gun never you know had a malfun malfunction of any kind and uh, I mean, it's a Glock, of course, right? But the one thing about the Glocks is that they work out of the box. When you start changing stuff to them, especially integral piece, pieces and parts of the guns, uh, like a barrel or like a trigger, or, you know, whatever internal components, different stuff, you could have some issues. Uh, with the facts and stuff, I did see an improvement in accuracy and groupings. The guns seem to shoot a lot more consistent, as well as just a soft shooting, very, very pleasant uh, experience, quicker follow-up shots, and uh, it's just sick. It makes the gun look sick. It's different. Uh, it adds a little bit more weight to it. It's just softer shooting and easier to shoot overall. Seeing this fangled gat, though, and, uh, you know, it's all aftermarket -y, I suppose, you know, for the most part. And really, this is nothing compared to what most dudes are doing to their Glock, at least on the interwebs. But this is functional stuff that is giving me a benefit. And it's not really making anything more difficult. I'm not really giving anything up. Um, you know, this is a tiny gun to me still. I'm 6'2", 6'3". You know, this is still a, a tiny gun to me. I've got no problems carrying this damn near even in the pocket, even with the comp on it. The problem was, is I was running it in my Harry's Holster Singleton in the original configuration, of course, and check them out. Link in the description box below, link pinned in the comment section below. Code Terribly Tactical will save you 10% off every single time you order. Um, discreet Carry Concepts clips, perfectly molded, beautiful Kydex. I've got another one over here off camera for uh, my Shield Plus in 30 stupid carry that I have coming, but hey, 17 rounds in that gun. Um, these are the best inside the waistband rigs you can buy for your carry gun period uh this is not bias i use these rigs all the time i even got a freaking 
LCP-22 and his new Dirk over here. The, more coming up on this, on all of this in the future, so make sure you subscribe and stay tuned. Ring that notification bell. But it is no joke. I would prefer to carry in these rigs because, in my opinion, he really does make the best stuff. It's the most convenient. It's it's the most protected, but at the same time, you know, slimline, lightweight, and easy to conceal. Um, just great stuff. And so I would carry my 43 every single day in this. Once I got the barrel in the comp, I had no other option. I figured maybe I'd try a 48 rig and it might fit. Turns out that this configuration with the comp just slightly longer than a 48. So I didn't think that that would necessarily be an issue for me. I tried a um, few different holsters. It didn't fit. So I had gone to this little MFT Cheapo Depot minimalist, minimalist rig. Um, nothing in comparison as far as the clip like these, these are what you want. This you could carry in basketball shorts. You are not going to lose retention of the holster. Um, this, not the best clip, but good enough. Got, you know, no qualms with it in the grand scheme of thing. It's been working out for me. And uh, because I got the comp, just clips on, stays out of the way. And uh, honestly, it doesn't, it's not half bad. You're sweating on the gun all day which I've never seen a Glock rust, really. You know, sometimes you'll get some rust accumulating by the sights or whatever, but as far as like an actual Glock, I've never seen one rusted myself, or at least I haven't been able to rust one yet. Um, but carries the gun. I mean, it's secure. I'm holding it upside down. The gun is loaded, and it's just clamped onto the trigger guard. You can adjust your retention a little bit. You've got the claw, which helps cant the gun into your body. So I wear this appendix, so that helps push into my body, conceal the gun even better. I could always even run the flush mag in there if I wanted to, which I just keep loose in a pocket. Um, you know, and then it's an even smaller profile. So, you know, this is my reload. I keep one, you know, I got the eight rounder in there plus one. So nine rounds out of the gate. And then I got another six. I also keep spare mags and more ammo in the bag as well as another gun and different stuff. You know, hopefully I don't end up in any type of a firefight, but if need be, you got to have the stuff that you need, right? So simple little concepts, but you know, we're talking about it. And again, even gun guys, even gun guys probably don't carry this much stuff or this useful of stuff um any day of the week you know they might have oh it's in the car it's in the truck it's whatever oh i left it at home it does you no good there it does you no good so check the link check out harry's holster save yourself 10 percent off a of code terribly tactical and carry your guns everywhere all the time so what else i got um g-shock you guys have been seeing it the whole time g-shock okay they're super like convenient watches for me because I do a lot of stuff with my hands. I'm always shooting and doing whatever, you know, I oil and dirt and whatever from cleaning the guns or, or just shooting the guns or doing whatever. Um, plus I'm always banging it up against a door frame or a counter or something. And it, it takes the abuse. It's, it's where it's at for me for an active style, you know, watch they're cheap enough. There's a wide variety of different ones you can get and then have a wide variety of different functions and stuff. I have several. This is just the, uh, the current one that I'm rocking. I don't know if it's the Illuminator or the Protection or what. I don't know which model specifically, but it was like, it was definitely less than a hundred bucks. I think even less than like 70 bucks. So either way, also to the paracord, rubber bands, just cordage style stuff, stuff to be able to fix or repair, uh, lash stuff together to a pack, to yourself, whatever. There's a lot of uses. Plus there's a whistle and there's a built-in little fire scraper inside. So yeah, it's, it's old school. It's douchey. It's whatever, but I carry this stuff because God forbid I actually need this stuff. Then I got the stuff and I know how to use this stuff, which that's always a very important part of this. You can have all the tools that you want and I encourage you having all the tools and, and everything that you need, but also you need to know how to use them. You can never guarantee that anyone else being around is going to be able to help and you yourself are your own first responder and you're at a hundred percent of your own emergencies, which is why I have stuff like this. I also have stuff like this. Um, this is actually my main like EDC blade. This is what I'm grabbing for uh, to cut boxes, string off the shirt, whatever. Can definitely be used defensively. It's a Microtech LUDT large underwater demolition team folding knife. It will deploy uh, automatically. Push button underwater even. This is issued NSN number to like seal divers and the demo teams and stuff like that. Awesome knife. Uh, very high function, high format, beautiful, you know, sleek and uh, not cheap. Neither is this, you know, this one I got for free. Thank you again, Emerson, but um, this one I had to pay for, but this is, you know, my fighting folder. 
This is my EDC slash also fighting folder, but this cuts most of the boxes. This one I'm saving the edge for the bad guys. Um, but either way, just very useful stuff to have at hand. You know, we got guns and lights and knives and tools and you got to have it though. You have to have it. All this literally is what I carry plus more even. What else do I got? Lighter fire starting capabilities, uh, both for at work and survival purposes. These are cheap. They're lightweight. They take up barely any room in your pocket, in your purse, in your bag, in your backpack, in your vehicle, whatever. Have them everywhere. This could literally save your life, people. What else we got going on? Well, I typically wear some type of tactical shorts and or pants. Otherwise, I'm wearing jeans or whatever. Um... As far as on my person, Solomon Shoes. Solomon Shoes are the best active slash tactical wear footwear you can buy, in my opinion. They're not the cheapest thing, but you should check them out. I've got videos on all this stuff, like I said, already on the channel if you guys are interested, as well as there will be more content on all this stuff in the future. I'm always cooking up something, so make sure you, you tune in. Um, but Core Essentials, check this out. For the longest time, and I still am, you know... SOE, SOE EDC, SOE EDC low profile, have several of their belts, still wear them all the time, um, but Core sent me out this belt years ago at this point. You can go back and look where, you know, when I did the original videos on it, and it was even before I got around to doing the original videos that I've had it and been wearing it. This thing still looks damn near like the day I got it for the most part. It's scuffed and scratched up, obviously from use and from wear. You know, it's, it's bending over a little bit in... Um, in some places like here where my holster usually goes the holster usually clips on right here uh, on the belt and you can see that it's fraying a little bit you know and getting molded over but it's still stiff you know it's not nearly as stiff as other belts like the special operations equipment or whatever but it's very comfortable it's very convenient the track line feature of this belt being able to you know micro adjustments as much as you want you know relieve it you know whatever uh that is extremely extremely convenient and very very comfortable the thing about carrying guns and stuff like this and kid is it's supposed to be comforting not comfortable but if you can have both and i found with these belts you definitely can have both because this holds up my pants and all this gear plus even more sometimes uh probably even more right now that i'm forgetting about every day four years and this is how it looks they just sent me another one not that long ago in multicam black, and it's awesome. It's beautiful looking. It's sick. I'm definitely going to do some setups with that um, and maybe start wearing that, but this can go for another few years. This thing is still working perfectly, and I really do appreciate them, so check out Core Essentials. Um, I don't have a link or a discount code or anything for them, but they've sent me out some product. I've got some more reviews coming up on their belts in the future, including their battle belt and uh, more on like their, their cop rig style of belt. And uh, the EDC stuff, working great. I carry heavy guns sometimes. I carry big guns sometimes. I carry a lot of stuff every single day, and it supports it. It works, and uh, real easy on and off fits the belt loops can't go wrong and then lastly of course a ball cap okay not only because i'm starting to look like vegeta but also because it is like a tactical thing right it's sunny out during the day that helps as do these edge tactical eyewears okay i've been wearing these for years these are my shooting glasses my competition glasses my everyday glasses they're all dirty they need a good cleaning definitely need a good cleaning that's like dried up sweat or something gross um but yeah, I mean, it's ball cap and sunglasses. When I'm shooting, I'm shooting all the time, almost every single day. Uh, this protects hot brass from falling in between my eyeglasses and burning the shit out of me. Uh, you know, it's just something to have. You know, it's it's a ball cap and glasses. Simple stuff. Have it. Wear it. Don't wear it. Keep it in the truck, but have it. You will be surprised. Even if it's wintertime and it is not sunny out, uh, snow blindness, whatever, like sunglasses. And even regardless of just the vision and being able to see stuff, the protection. Try and have ANSI rated glasses and stuff that is going to not fog on you. Stuff that will protect your eyes, especially when you're shooting. Stuff blows up. Stuff ricochets. Stuff fragments. Whatever it may be, uh, your eyes are extremely important. So protect them. And then this, you can donate to charity. Uh, checking out Freedom Fatigues, link pinned in the comment section below, or it'll be in uh, the description box below. Check them both. Ch always check them both. There's some good stuff. Make sure you check the first three links in the description box below. Those will help you fight for your rights, okay, which we seem to be losing more and more every single day because nobody wants to do anything about it. Uh, but Freedom Fatigues, 
charities for veterans and law enforcement and first responders and stuff like that. And uh, I don't get nothing for it. I donate all that money myself, any commission, but they make some awesome apparel and uh, they're super cool guys over there. So check them out. So either way, I've ranted at you guys enough, and I don't even know that people watch these videos anymore. I don't think that people make these videos anymore. When was the last time you saw like an EDC pocket dump kind of thing, like mainstream? Uh, I don't even think nothing fancy is putting out pocket dump videos anymore. Gear check! Um... Who knows? I don't know. I enjoy making them. They're fun. It gives people that are new to this an idea of what you could be carrying, what you should be carrying. Not that I am any type of, you know, anybody to be looked up to and, and referenced from. Um, but the stuff, okay, having the tools, the knife is one of the most useful tools. This could be a screwdriver if need be, but understand that if you do that, then it's going to work not as well as a knife eventually. So I've got screwdrivers. I've got different options. And again, this is nothing. This is a mere sampling. This literally just came off of my person, and I've still got plenty of room in these tactical douchebag cargo shorts to put even more crap. So have it. The one thing that I don't have currently is medical because I'm wearing shorts, and I usually wear that Lynx Defense Ankle Med Kit, so that just gets stuffed in my EDC bag and still taken along with me. I got med stashed in the truck. I got med on the backpack with me all the time. The backpack is always within arm's reach. Um... You know, and that's just what it is. But medical, medical is super important. Make sure you have the medical stuff. And even if you don't know how to use it, somebody might be able to help you. Don't count on it. Um, but either way, we've gone on way too long at this point. But this is a, a little EDC. This is what I've been carrying pretty much. Sometimes it changes depending on what I'm doing, where I'm going. But pretty much every single day, probably 98% of the time, this is the stuff that's on my person. Or at least has been lately. I think we're going to do another video showing the EDC bag and going a little bit more into depth with that and some different options. So stay tuned. Subscribe if you haven't. Ring that notification bell so you don't miss it. And make sure you check out the first three links in the description box below. Those are to help you fight for your God-given inalienable, constitutionally protected and reaffirmed, but inherent by birth gun rights, people. Uh, without guns, we have no life and liberty, and none of this matters. So remember that and do something to protect it because this is what protects you, right? Uh, you're the good guy, right? Be the good guy. Uh, anyway, I appreciate you guys. If you want to shop with any of the links in the description box below or pinned in the comment section below, it does go directly back to supporting the channel. It's always appreciated, never expected. Um, but check out the channel. There's a bunch of cool stuff on it, a bunch of older videos on all this stuff, newer videos to come. And uh, we'll catch you along down the road, people. Appreciate you being here. Stay safe. Keep being dangerous. And never forget.